Yeah, um, it's my great pleasure to be here to present our uh, latest access protocol, RAPC URL, uh, which is designed for Ethereum virtual machine to be able to access the uh, future of the data and enable a lot of new applications that we believe that, that uh, future Ethereum can enable. So first of all, what is Web3 Access Protocol? It's defined in ERC4804, Web3 URL standard, uh, which was finalized the day before, before yesterday, um, which we have, we have a very good timing. And it is an IANA registered scheme. It, it actually is the HTTP-like uh, URL, but instead of locating uh, this centralized resources hosted on a server, it's designed to locate a decentralized resources hosted by a smart contract or with e uh, mapped by ENS. It has a very similar semantics with HTTP and with uh, corresponding, for example, path and also, uh, for example, query. And you can find more details of EIP 4804, the final uh, the specification in the EIP repo. And there's also Web3 URL. You can find a lot of examples that are live uh, using Web3 URL. We also offer an Easter demo bounty for the developers who are now a, you, be able to use Web3 URL to develop awesome applications. So why we need kind of like a Web3 URL and what is the motivation? The original motivation we are developing this access protocol is that we found a lot of more and more NFTs that are moving fully on chain. For example, to name a few, there are cyber blockers, nums, moonbirds, island blocks, and there are more and more coming. Why? Because they would like to have a fully decentralized NFT, not only the token contract, but also the corresponding data, for example, images, and it can be also music or maybe videos that are fully on chain. When a user buy a token, it's not only just buy a token URL with a token ID on a smart contract, but also owns the actual images that will never disappear on chain. However, when I actually I bought a few and, and also started all this project, and I'm quite surprised. All these images they are now actually using third party to render those images. For example, they're using HTTP for, for the DC Moonbirds and also IPFS. And even if they have all the data on chain, that is quite counterintuitive because now we have Ethereum and we have all data. Why not just using Ethereum to render all these resources directly? And that is the original motivation we developed the Web3 Access Protocol, which allows the user to browse all these images or any web contents directly on the Ethereum smart contracts. So for example, here are a couple of examples that now we are able to, using Web3 URL, to browse all these images. And all these URL are actually ineffective. So if you type this URL in Firefox with our extension, then you are able to directly browse all these images on Ethereum. And that's something we, have, we believe we are, should be actually widely adopted in all the projects that have all these web contents that is available on Ethereum. And how to use Web3 URL? So basically, it inherits most features of HTTP, which is already widely adopted for the whole internet. It has a decentralized authority, uh, which is a contract or a name for a name service. Right, right now, we have fully integrated with ENS. And there's also defined a way to call a smart contract that is core data. And lastly, 
there is a format of how the data will be present at the browser. It can be a JSON file, or it can be natively web objects, pictures, webs, JavaScripts, anything can be displayed using Web3 URL. And there's a lot of uh, examples of the web, how to use Web3 URL, so you can check the Web3 URL website. The website itself, so the link here is still HTTP, but itself is already hosted using Web3 URL and running on top of Ethereum. So another question is how I can access EVM using Web3 URL. So there are a couple of ways, but at the beginning, since we trust, since this standard just has three days, just born after three days since its finalization, so we have launched the gateway to support the Web3 URL at the beginning. And so web 3 ethereio is the current gateway for the Ethereum. So for example, if you type web 3 URL with web 3 urleis that's our homepage to introduce web 3 URL, then you can just place web 3 URL as a subdomain of the gateway, and now you're able to browse the content that is hosted on the Ethereum. We also have a Firefox extension that is able to translate a Web3 URL to the HTTP gateway link. And as a roadmap, we are also doing native integration with modern browsers, such as Brave, Carbon, Firefox itself, and Chrome. And we also support multiple blockchains. The Web3 URL is designed, was born to support multiple blockchains. Uh, for example, we have already support, this is just a few blockchains we are currently supporting, including Ethereum testnets, and also, for example, our uh, other, other, other network like BNB chain or Avalanche. And we are also going to extend the standard to support heterogeneous blockchains like Bitcoin. So what are the new applications that can enable by the Web3 URL? There are, we believe there are tons of applications. One natural application is the on-chain FD images. So for example, cyberblocks, they upload all the metadata, SVG layers on-chain and compose them using smart contracts. And using Web3 URL, we deploy a contract that combines these layers together and return a string to the uh, to from the contract. And now using this Web3 URL, we can directly call this contract with customer method, then we can render any token URI, any token. And another interesting experiment we are doing is Vitalis block. So we upload the, the whole Vitalix block, which contains 40 megabytes of data on the contract to Arbitron Nova, which is the mainnet of uh, layer two on Ethereum. And this only costs 0.13 Ether, that's roughly $300. But now, even the Vitalik, his personal website is down, but while we have uh, something some mainnet that is able to host Vitalik's website forever on his Ethereum network. And it will receive a widely reception from the community. There's tons of discussions on how we do this and how the UF3 URL works. And feel free to leave your comments in the Reddit. And still to support a personal website, we also propose ERC-5018. It is a kind of file system-like interface so that we are able to mimic a file system using a smart contract and using a tool we call ETHFS Uploader to synchronize local folders and files with the blockchain. And that's how we are able to just use a single command and synchronize all Vitalik's block to the blockchain on Arbitron Nova. And so for our bounty, welcome to use our tools and to deploy all kinds of interesting applications that you can imagine, crazy ideas. 
So imagine there's some more and more applications that we are able to enable besides that these two examples. For example, one big application we are imagining is dynamic websites with multi-user interactions. Decentralized blogger, decentralized Dropbox, decentralized email, decentralized Git, or decentralized Craigslist. Anything we can imagine on the Web2 world now is possible on Web3. For example, we have the Git3 version. Right now, we are giving a demo that now we are able to use in all the Git with a translate to Web3 URL. Now we are able to de develop Ethereum on top of Ethereum. That is something unimaginable before. So you can check our Web3 URL for all these applications. A lot of them are already live or running on testnet. And feel free to come up with your crazy ideas. And so one problem is that, oh, that's amazing. And um, is everything that we can do anything on the Web2? Wait, wait a minute. We still have a lot of problems to solve on the, in the infrastructure layer. So the, the critical issue here is that the storage costs on Ethereum will be super, super expensive on mainnet. For example, one gigabyte of data, on-chain data, will cost roughly $10 million US dollar. That is unacceptable for a lot, a lot of Web2 applications. Even for a lot of MFTs, they have very few metadata, they're very expensive, but still super expensive. One solution that we can find a route, a route, a route for to alleviate this problem is to use Arbitra Nova with DAC, which we already experimented, for example, with Vitalik's block on top of that. But at the same time, we believe we need a even better solutions to address this storage issue so that we are able to combine the power of storage, scalability, storage, and also Ethereum, both in terms of scalability. And so that's why we propose is storage. That is a storage layer, native storage layer for Ethereum, designed for Ethereum. It aims to scale the Ethereum storage to petabytes with one to the 1,000 cost reduction. And thanks to Ethereum Foundation, we also received a ES grant support for the Ether storage project, project itself, which was just announced last month uh, with the Layer 2 community grant. So with all these possibilities that we enable on top of Ethereum infrastructure, we believe that we are able to achieve much, much better web future web 3 that built on top of Ethereum. So uh, we are able to scale dramatically so that we can serve anybody, anywhere in the world with billions of users. And we can be much, much more fully decentralized versus we are still have to rely on HTTP, DNS, all kinds of centralized components. We have native Web3 access core protocol so that we are able to perform from front end, EVM, and lastly storage, the whole stack now be, can be fully decentralized on top of Ethereum. And there's, we do not need to another third party trust in the whole layers. And so thank you very much for attending my presentations. I will really happy to answer your questions. And after stage, we also have a booth uh, near the uh, Polygon and near. So welcome to come. And I'm happy to, looking forward to see you there. So thank you very much.